You got the touch. You got the power. It is I, Owen Garrett Scalbert here, bringing you the very first part of my prime time uh, videos. We're going to be looking at, this time around, Classics Optimus Prime. Now, I know this isn't the original Optimus Prime. I don't have one, yada, yada, yada. Every Transformer fan should have an original Optimus Prime. Suck my balls. I was out of country when the when they were re-released -re and haven't been able to find one, so... Any case, though, I gotta say, this guy is pretty, I mean, he pretty much represents everything that Optimus Prime is. Now, a little backstory on Optimus Prime, because of course you're all probably wanting and knowing what I know about this guy, even though we all know pretty much the same stuff. I'm gonna give it to you anyways. Now, Optimus Prime, first shows up in the episode uh, More Than Meets the Eye, which is the very first episode of Transformers. So this guy's been there, been around, excuse me, been around since episode one. He is the leader of the Autobots. He was originally Orion Pax. We all know this crap. He, though, he is essentially the leader that everyone likes. Everyone likes Optimus Prime. I like Optimus Prime, and I and I like Grimlock, and as many people know, most Grimlock fans don't like Optimus Prime, but I think Optimus Prime is the symbol, if not the the only one of the only reasons why Transformers survived as long as it did is because of this character right here. He's just a likable leader. We all can relate to him. He does make mistakes, and he admits that he makes mistakes. Sadly, out of all the all the uh, 1980 uh, yeah 1980s uh, cartoon leaders uh, of groups, he's the most human. He's the one that we can all relate to. He, you know, he has some doubts. He has some concerns. Though, honestly, though, um, Optimus Prime also is, um, you know is also like this and more in the comic books. He's very, you know, he's, he's a younger leader. He's not 100% sure how to deal with someone like uh, Megatron. Now, we all know the horrific tale that scarred an entire generation of children. Um, in the 1986 film, the year I was born, so, you know, just, you know, there might be a correlation there, just saying, uh, you know, you know, uh, I was born with a uh, the birthmark on my ass. It said six six six. I'm just I'm just throwing that out there as a possibility. But in any case, he is uh, he unfortunately dies in the movie. In the first what was it like 20 minutes or so? He dead. And the funny thing is, is that Hasbro had no idea how how they had scarred children with with his death. And then they didn't have the heart to tell people that they were gonna do they're gonna bring him back and then kill him off and get in a later episode. <laughs> but they had to end that episode with a hey kids don't worry we're act we are we're gonna bring Optimus Prime back. We're sorry. We're sorry. And this is one possibly one of my favorite episodes of Transformers of all time actually. Um, uh, the rebirth of Optimus Prime. Now it's a, I think it's a really awesome episode, and they got to get use the Stan Bush uh, touch song, and it just, uh, it's one of the most memorable parts of my childhood, um, seeing Optimus Prime bending over Rodimus uh, and removing the Matrix with that, with that song blaring. So. Uh, yeah, I'm. I was very, very, very excited about that. By the way, I'm also going to be doing um, the trailer in my next review because the trailer in this in 
and this guy are kind of go hand in hand. And I just recently got this suit. So, anyways, um, Optimus Prime is just one of those characters that even if you if you're not a big fan of him, you like him anyways. And this guy, I believe, is a great representation of G1 Optimus Prime, but giving him a little, you know, a little bit of a newer look, just a bit. Alright, anyways, this is Omkyor Excalibur saying stay tuned to part two. We're actually going to go into depth on these, uh, on these toys. So, take it easy guys, and it's easy. Take it twice. Later.